So this block begins the K row, which is the 11th row out of the 13 blocks of the Dear Jane quilt. So we're getting there. This block has, indicates that it's been modified. So we will go to the book. And when I did my block prep um, and I put it in a baggie, I went to take it out and I couldn't really determine which one were focus fabric. So before I laid it out, I marked which ones were my focus fabric from here. The difference from this one is that they took out this border and they did connect a couple of the blocks together. Like for example, this one is part of the rectangle and that kind of thing. So it's a simpler kind of a layout. So I have it laid out here. It's a little, looks a little odd, but it is the way it's supposed to be. And so this is a straightforward assembly. This is shorter because this is all one piece. So we've got the top row, second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row. So the half square triangle units, I will base with my hypotenuse last. So I'll do the sides and then I'll do this last. So my tags go away from the middles and I'll put these together and then treat them like a normal square. And then again, base the sides of the square, opposite sides and then the other opposite sides. And the rectangles, I will base the short sides first and then the long sides, which gives you a more accurate edge. And that's all the shapes that are in this. So let me get to basting. I'm gonna baste and assemble this as I go so that I don't get confused. And I do have a directional fabric, which is why I have the little arrows. I just wanna make sure that I keep that in line. All right, so I've basted my top row and I've assembled my half square triangle square. And we've got that all uh, sewn together with my directional fabric in the right direction. When I basted my squares, I basted the background ones on the sides first and then the top and the bottom and I did the focus fabric opposite of that so you have less bunching in the corner. So I did the top and the bottom and then the sides so that way you have um, the folds opposing. Otherwise, when you if you have them all the same side, which it doesn't matter, but if you have them on the same side, they tend to bunch here where the folds, the secondary folds come together. So I've just found that it's easier to do it this way when it comes to paper removal and assembly. So my top row of the block is all assembled. And so I will go on and connect these two pieces for the second row and then attach it to my first. Okay, so I put these two together and that is my entire second row. And I will attach the second row to the first row. So I've got my first two rows together and I went to check to make sure everything was in its place. So I'm looking here at the picture and then I looked at my block and realized that it's a mirror image and that was because when I laid out my pieces, I'm working from the back. So from the back, I've got focus fabric, background, focus fabric, background, focus fabric, background, and then background, focus fabric. And that's correct. So it'll turn out to be a mirror image at the end. But I just wanted to ver wanted to um, point that out because it did confuse me a little bit. But I'm going to go on to the next section and make sure that when I line it up, I line it up the with the back on the top. So I got my third row assembled, and that's ready to go and be attached to my other two rows. And when I attach these. I'm going to stitch along this seam. What I'm doing when I attach these rows is I'm going to stitch along this seam up into about here and then start on the other end. Make sure that my this way your, your ends are always lined up and then work your way back to where you tied off. So I got the third row attached and so at this point with the mirror image of the block, you should have your block look like this. And so now I'm gonna attach these two to each other and then connect those to the other three. So I got the fourth row completed and attached. 
And so your block should look like this now. And on to the assembling of the last row. So I've got my final row all assembled. And now it's just a matter of attaching it to the remainder of my block. So I've attached the fifth row. So this is what you should have from the back, which is this. And so when you flip it over, it'll be a mirror image of this. And now I have a completed K1 block. Thank you.